Hey game makers, Pixelated Pope here, and today I'll be showing you a solution for a problem that is often overcomplicated, rotated rectangular collisions. Why would you need this? Well, let's say you're making a top-down shooter and you want a big wide laser weapon, like the Mega Satan laser in Binding of Isaac. If it was a standard laser weapon, you'd probably just use collision line right down the center. Obviously, that's not going to work when the laser is so wide, and there's not a collision line width function. So you might think, well, I'll just put two more collision lines on the left and the right side at the width. But how do you position those lines? You'd need to find these two points, then create the other two lines from that point to the end of the laser. Then you might as well connect the top and check for the collisions there. When all is said and done, you've got upwards of five collision lines, and there's still empty space where smaller enemies could avoid detection although a bit unlikely. Regardless, that is not a very clean solution, and you'd have like 20 length deer functions being called every step just to position all of those collision lines, so let's look at a better way. First, let me point out that while I'll be working in GMS2, all of these same concepts work in GMS1, so keep following along even if you're still stuck in GMS1 land. Let's run the project in its current state and see what we got. I have my player, the green circle in the middle, and several target objects. I'm drawing a line from my player out to my mouse position. When I move the mouse so that the line overlaps one of the blue targets, it turns red. But if I use the mouse wheel to increase the size of this line, it only increases the visual representation of the line and not the collision check itself. So how do we fix this? We're going to use what I call a sensor object, which is an object whose sole purpose is to check for collisions. Let's add this object and call it object sensor. The way this system is going to work is we are going to take advantage of GameMaker's built-in instance collision system. If you scale or rotate an object using the built-in image variables, that object's collision mask is also rotated and scaled. So we just need an object that can be rotated and scaled to match the angle and dimension of our desired line. To do that, we need to give this instance a special sprite. Let's create that sprite now. I'm going to name it Sprite Collision, and I'm going to set its width to 1 and its height to 2. Now I'm going to set the origin to be middle left. I'll explain why in a bit. The next step is to set the collision mask to precise. I know, I know, you've been told to avoid precise collision detections because they are quote unquote slow. And while you shouldn't use them for all collision detections, it's certainly okay to use them when you actually need them. This is one such scenario since we are going to be rotating and stretching this sprite into all sorts of non 90 degree angles. It's worth noting here that the target sprite's mask is set to ellipse, which is a precise mask type. The precision of this solution is controlled not just by our sensor sprite precision, but also the target sprite's precision. Now, I just need to fill the sprite in white, and that's our entire object. Typically, you'd want your sensor object to not be visible, but while we are debugging any issues, it will be useful to see the sprite, so we'll leave it for now. Let's go put this object to use. Open up Object Player Step Event. So right after we increase the laser's width with the mouse wheel, but before we do collision detection, let's set up our sensor. The first thing we need to do is check if there is an instance yet, and if not, create it. What's really cool about this solution is you could have a thousand different lasers on screen all at once, and all of them can use this one single instance of object sensor. Moving instances and then checking collisions is instant, so there's no reason that all objects can't share just one sensor. Since any instance could have been using this sensor before my player, I need to take control of the sensor and set it up to do what I want. In this case, I want it to match my line. First step, position the instance where the start of my line is. Next, we want the angle of the object to match the angle of my line. This is simple with point direction. Okay, here's where the origin we set in the sprite becomes important. We now need to scale the sprite of the sensor object to match the dimensions of our desired line. This is why we put the origin in the middle and to the left. Try messing with the origin on your own in the example project to see why this is so important. Let's start by stretching the X scale to match the distance of our laser. Again, pretty easy. And now we need to match the Y scale to the laser's width. With that, I assume we've got our sensor object sizing and positioning correctly. Let's run real fast and see it in action. So we should see two lines. The aqua line is what we were drawing before, and the white line should be our sensor object. Let's increase the width. Oh, hmm. 
That's not good. Our sensor's width is roughly twice the width of our other line. Why is that? Well, let's look at our sprite collision again. It's two pixels tall, right? So if we set image Y scale to two, the total height would be four pixels tall. Three would be six pixels tall, 100 would be 200 pixels tall, etc. So we need to consider the height of our collision sprite when setting the Y scale so that it remains the intended size. Back to the object player step event. Fortunately, this is really easy. On the line where we set the Y scale, simply divide laser width by sprite get height sprite collision. So let's walk through why this works real fast. If our desired laser width is 10 and our sprite height is 2, then we want to set the image Y scale to 5 because 2 times 5 is 10, which is the height we want. So we divide our laser width, 10, by the height of our sprite, 2, to get the desired scale, 5. Let's run again. And now it's nearly perfect. Certainly close enough for collision detection, which we aren't doing yet. So let's hook that up and we should be just about done. Just below where we set up the sensor, we loop through all object targets using a width statement. Right now we are seeing if they collide with the line and if they do, turn red, else go back to blue. Instead of collision line, however, we just want to use place meeting to check collision with our sensor object. Run the game and see how that works. Huh, it's not terribly accurate, is it? When we make the rectangle wide and angled, we are colliding with objects we probably shouldn't. So what's going on here? Well, it has to do with our collision sprite. Since it's only two pixels tall and getting stretched to a much, much larger size, GM loses some accuracy when using it for collisions. While this is unfortunate, there is an easy fix. Open up Sprite Collision, Click Resize Sprite, uncheck Maintained Aspect Ratio, and change the height to something like 60. Apply and run the game again. And now we are much more accurate since the stretch is less extreme from the original size. I imagine if we scaled up to thousands of pixels wide, we'd see that same inaccuracy come back. But this should work for our purposes. One last thing you might want to do to make this a bit easier to use throughout your code is pull it into a script. I've included this script in the example project available in the description below. Check it out and see how it changes the code where we were doing the collision detection. Example projects are available for both GMS1 and GMS2. And that's it. Hopefully you found this a bit helpful. If so, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons to see more videos like it. If you didn't find it useful, feel free to ask questions or suggest topics for tutorials that you may find more interesting in the comments down below. Regardless, thanks for watching. Now go make something awesome.